Hello everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor software program. In today's MT Predictor video, I'd like to have a look at some losing trades because it's important to talk about losses when trading and to show how losses can and will and do, un uh, do unfold. But first, let's have a look at our risk disclaimer. Just remind everyone that all examples in these videos should be considered as hypothetical. No trades are actually taken. They're shown for illustration and training purposes only. Remind you there's a risk of loss in trading and investing. Put another way, all professional traders know and understand and more importantly accept that losses can and will and do unfold. And that's the topic of today's uh, today's video, to show you some uh, losing trades um, as they happen in the markets. All trade decisions are your own sole responsibility. Right, let's have a look at a chart. The one I want to look at is a three minute chart of the YM. For those of you who have been following my videos regularly, will know that the last video we looked at a lovely holy grail uh, trade setup on the YM that unfolded <coughs> back here on the previous day. It was uh, You can have a look at the previous video to show that where that turned out to be, um, I think it was a, a plus 9R profit or something, which was very, very good indeed. It's off here. Yeah, nine and a half hour profit, we looked at that. Right, let's go forward to the next day, which was uh, Friday, December the 7th, which was uh, this day here. Sorry, sorry, Friday, December the 8th, which is this day here. <coughs> and in particular, I want to look at a setup that unfolded here. But first, let's go to the higher time frame chart, as we usually do. The higher time frame is a time frame between three and five time frames higher. So as this is a three minute, would go out to the 15 minute. If you're say trading 15 minute Forex, you'd go out to the <coughs> hourly chart. If you're trading daily charts, you'd go out to the weekly. So a time frame between three and five time frames higher. If we go back to just before Friday opened, you can see we had a pivot high here, which was halfway through Thursday. So if we right mouse click, we do decision point. As usual, this gives us an area of support or resistance on our chart that's there in advance. Let's see what happened as Friday opened. You can see the market went up into this resistance and then started to come back down again. So at the time, and it's always important to look at these uh, examples about what was happening at the time. At the time, this looked like it was going to be providing resistance. You can see we actually had a VSL unfold on the 15 minute chart. So let's go and see what the situation would have been on the, the three minute chart at the time. So I'll just turn training mode off, go to our three minute chart and have a look at see what was unfolding there. <clears throat> let's go back and again look at around about here somewhere. So here you can see that there's our 15 minute resistance. That looked like to be holding that high very nicely indeed. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cough here. Must be the cold weather we're having in the UK at the moment. So let's go forward, let's go forward, let's go forward, and then suddenly we have a TS1 cell setup uh, unfold here. If I place the analysis on, this looks to be a good setup because the MTP trend has gone red. We're coming off resistance here, and for you guys who are more experienced, you could almost look at this and say this would be a holy grail trade setup as well. What do we mean by Holy Grail trade setup? Well, if this is the start of our edit wave sequence, remember we use um, edit wave patterns in isolation. We don't look at uh, patterns the whole time because we know that markets go in cycles. Therefore, only about 50% of the time should you be using any uh, technical analysis of when the market's clear. <clears throat> so we start our sequence here at our hard time frame resistance. The initial decline down looks to be a wave one. The initial correction up into here looks to be a wave two. So we probably think this is going to go down to our typical wave 3 WPT for a nice 5.6 hour profit. So this is exactly the same setup as we had the previous day at the time. Remember it's always important to look at these at the time and not in hindsight. So let's go forward a bar. There you were, just clipped into a short trade. Remember we use correct position sizing to vary the number of lots, contracts or shares. In this case less than 2% risk of a sample 20,000 US dollar account. This would mean shorting 5 contracts. Let's move forward. The market then moves back up again and then goes through and would have stopped you out. So this would have been a losing trade but the important point is at the time if we go back 
at the time there that looked to be an absolutely perfect setup. So it looked to be a perfectly valid setup, everything coming in quite nicely with our MTP trend and our large degree resistance. But as we've seen, you would have been stopped out for a losing trade. And that's why I wanted to do this video to show you that losses can and will and do unfold. It's important to talk about losses. and I don't think enough software vendors or gurus talk about losses. They seem to sweep them under the carpet a lot. So this is why this video is specifically dedicated to losing trades to show you that losses can and will and do unfold. But we use correct position sizing. In other words, this position sizing here allowed you to only risk one risk unit. So yes, it would have been a losing trade, but it would only be one risk unit, i.e. less than the 2% of a sample $20,000 account. If you remember this previous trade on the day before was actually a profit of nine risk units. So this is what we want to try and achieve in our trading and what uh, professional traders want to, to look for as well is that they want to look that when they have losing trades, which will come through, the losses are kept small, in this case minus one R or one risk unit, but when the profits come through, as in this previous uh, example, the profits are large, in this case it would have been nine risk, uh, risk units profit. So a nine R profit, you can have then a loss of minus one R losses before you start uh, going backwards in your account. So losses will and do unfold, but the trick is keeping them small. Let's clear everything off. Let's go forward a little bit further. And here, suddenly, we had a VSL. This was in and around our 15-minute DP. So this would have been a good one to look at. Let's place the analysis on. We move forward another bar. We actually got a slightly smaller um, red cell bar there. So you would have redone your analysis onto that bar there looks to be a good trade setup. We move forward, you would have been taken in for a short trade. You move forward, the market sort of drifts sideways and then starts to go down uh, quite nicely. In this case, you would have been past your 100% initial risk level. Again, position sizing takes care of the number of uh, contracts to go short again for the same 2% risk on the same $20,000 sample account. Let's move forward. Market's drifting up, market's drifting up, very, very frustrating, drifting up, and there you go. Just go straight, make sure it goes right the way through. Yes, there it is, it would have actually stopped you out for a, uh, a losing trade. So again, another losing trade. So remember, losses can and will and do unfold. The only thing I'll say about this particular VS setup is because uh, with a VS setup, it's a volume based one. In other words, we're looking for a high volume spike that then fails to follow through above a psychologically important high, which it did here. By the way, that history triangle there, it didn't really. It didn't really clear exactly the, the high. I'll look at that in a minute. So I'm just looking at this one. So um, it reversed back down and it's meant to be when professionals are then looking to move the market quickly in the opposite direction. <clears throat> in other words, the fake out when markets uh, make a fake move beyond an important psychological high or low. So these normally go with you very quickly because they're normally backed by the professional money. So when the market came down here, if I right mouse click here and do Elliott Wave Minor, you can see this was actually uh, a minor Elliott Wave 3. So in Elliott Wave terms, you should really carry on going down here. In other words, <coughs> this any or any Wave 4 retracement here should not go back into the area of Wave 1. Plus, you're past the 100% initial risk level. So at the very least, the more experienced users, even though the MTP trend was still red on this VS setup, should really be starting to get their, um, their stops to break even. So at the very worst, this still would have been a minus 1R loss. But for the more experienced users, this probably would have been a break even trade. This um, VS cell setup here, this wouldn't have been an ideal one because it was only on a break of this minor high here. In other words, it wasn't on a failure at a DP from the previous high. In other words, it wasn't breaking an important psychological high. So the more experienced users among you wouldn't have even considered that. So let's clear everything off. Let's turn training mode off and see what happened for the rest of the day. The rest of the day, it basically chopped sideways. You probably wouldn't have been looking at any um, setups here as it was close to the end of the day. And again, the pattern was absolutely horrible. So this is why I wanted to do today's video, just to show you that this uh, setup here, uh, in fact, if we go down to the two minute chart, would this have been found as the Holy Grail trade setup? 
Yes, it would have done. It would have been automatically found as a Holy Grail trade setup. Again, looking like a good potential trade uh, there. Just exactly the same as the previous day, but this time it would have actually resulted in a minus one hour loss. So that's why I wanted to show this, to show you that even though the setup looked identical to the previous day, this resulted in a losing trade. So yesterday there were some um, losses coming in on the YM particularly this Holy Grail trade setup. This VS setup may have been a break-even trade if you'd brought your stop to break-even as a more experienced user. If you'd been trading the NQ, it was actually a better day on the NQ. Here we were at 15-minute resistance, a bit choppy and horrible. Our MTP trend was black. As the market came back down, there was a TS3 Holy Grail trade setup here, a sell setup. The market didn't reach its target. If you'd carried on um, with your short trade into the close, that would have been a nice 5.7 hour profit, so that would have been a good profitable trade. If you'd come out at this BS buy setup, because this looked like a good trade setup, it would have been a 5 hour profit. And then if you'd got reversed along there, it would have been either a very small loss or basically break even as it chopped uh, uh, sideways. So the actual uh, NQ was actually a good day yesterday. So even though the YM had some losing trades, the NQ had some uh, profitable trades. But again, the important thing is the profits are large. In relation to the losses. So the whole uh, topic of this video today is to show you that losses can and will and do unfold as we've seen in detail in this particular trade setup here but the trick is keeping these losses small so when they come through you use correct position size and to keep the losses small at 1R or 1 risk unit but when the profits come through and they're large your aim is to have profits that are much larger than the losses and that's what professional traders do to try and uh, increase their account over time. Small losses and large profits. Not ignoring the losses, but keeping the losses small.